Well, our next guest founded one of the top 10 blogs in the world, according to Technorati. It's also been featured by Bloomberg Business Week as one of the most profitable blogs out there. That's, of course, Pete Cashmore, founder and CEO of Mashable. He's here to talk about some of the top tech trends he's tracking right now. Pete, it's good to see you, as always. Uh, give me your sense of whether Mark Zuckerberg's mea culpa, his explanation with that op-ed in yesterday's Washington Post, did, did the job. Did it quiet down some of those privacy concerns? Um, hi, Margaret. Uh I don't think so. I think, um, you know, so Mark Zuckerberg penned a piece in the Washington Post, essentially supposedly addressing uh, Facebook's privacy concerns. I think Mark actually did a better job in a private uh, letter to a blogger. He wrote an email to Robert Scovel, uh, who's a well-known tech blogger, in which he said they had uh, made mistakes. And there was no mention of mistakes in the Washington Post piece. So I think it was a little bit of a softball. It was a little bit lightweight, and there wasn't much meat for bloggers to really uh, latch on to in terms of an apology. Well, in terms of what changes technically, I mean, what is going to be different about the Facebook experience? So Facebook has said that it's going to simplify uh, privacy controls, which might mean that all those uh, dials and levers might be a little bit simpler to operate. But really, I think the main objection was was more that Facebook has been changing these without consulting users, has been making some parts of the privacy system opt out rather than opt in. Uh, so I don't think this is really going to address the core uh, allegations from the critics. So give us a sense, though. I mean, do these concerns actually amount to, to much? I mean, it, it, there are absolutely real reasons to, to voice concern uh, on the privacy front if you feel you've been violated, but does that actually cause people to disengage from Facebook? I don't think so because there aren't that many options right now. There aren't many options for switching away from Facebook and having a similar experience. Sites like MySpace aren't really the same user experience. Twitter doesn't allow photo uploading. So there's no real direct competitor to Facebook to which everybody could switch. Talk to me about uh, Twitter. They made the decision to block third-party ads. Right, so Twitter has announced that third-party ads will not be allowed in streams, in user timelines. So you won't be getting uh, advertising tweets from popular users like Kim Kardashian, who you know would uh, sell tweets essentially to advertisers. Uh, the reason Twitter might have done this, they say it's to protect the integrity of the stream, uh, but really they're launching their own ad platform, and they obviously you know want to be the only ad platform on Twitter, or at least one of the dominant ones. Do you know how they would find that out? I mean, how would they know whether you're receiving payment for your tweets? Um, so these tweets were a special type that were posted, and it would say at the bottom of the tweet how they were posted, and there were services like sponsored tweets and Adly, and it was quite easy to see uh, if these were automated tweets coming from those services. Uh, those services might do a kind of a go-round, allowing people to copy and paste advertisements, which would be much harder to track for Twitter. All right. Good to see you. Pete Cashmore there joining us from Vancouver this morning.